Greetings, and welcome to the Python Pirate Trading Course. I'm your instructor, Greg Moss. We're going to create a fun pirate trading game in Python. We're going to start at the very beginning with print and input statements. So even a beginner can follow along, and we're going to move really quick through this. We're going to try to make it a fast-paced course so you can become an expert in no time. We're also going to try and cover all of the basic language constructs that you would use. So you're going to feel really comfortable with Python when you're done with this course. Now, this course is going to be based on the 1982 game Taipan. It's been used as a foundation for many pirate trading games, such as Sid Meier's Pirates and other kinds of things. But this concept of a pirate trading game in Python, I think you're going to find it very fun. Check out the game Taipan so you know what we're doing here in this course. So now we're going to start out here. You can see that I am making a new project. We got a Python application selected here in Visual Studio and I've created the name here for my project. Now you can follow along in any IDE Python interpreter you want as long as it's 3.5, 3.6 or above. I'm not going to use any special platform specific code. We're going to use primarily input and print statements for our interface, much like the original Taipan was. But along the way, you're going to learn powerful object-oriented programming techniques, design patterns, and other things as we make this game. So let's get going. We've got our application selected here, and I've named it Python underscore pirate underscore trader. This is pretty much a common convention in Python. You name uh, everything with underscores between the words and you keep it lowercase. So then I just click OK. Now you can follow along by just creating any file in Python you want as long as it's empty. And we're going to start out just like we would in like a hello world example. We're going to say print welcome to Python Pirate Trader. Now there's not a lot to learn here but you'll notice that we're getting a little IntelliSense here that's given us some information. You can also come down here, like in our interactive thing, and you can do the same da thing down here, but you can type help and put the command that you need help on in parentheses. So you can do this for any command, and you can see here, looks like there's a little Visual Studio problem there, but you can see here that we can get help that way as well. Now, just like a Hello World app, we can go now and run this. And we'll see that it says, Welcome to Python Pirate Trader. So that's your basic Hello World in Python. And we're going to build up from here. So as you can see, the Python, or the print is in lower case. You have a parentheses for the function. And we're passing along this string. Now you could use single quotes here, or you can use double. Python doesn't care as long as you're consistent. So this will work the same. And so now let's go ahead and see how to get input. We can now say input, and what they ask for at the very first in the Taipan game is for your firm name. Please enter the firm name. And that's going to give us the input here. And we can run this and see that it comes up and now prompts us to enter your firm name. And we can type in, I type my name, my firm name. And nothing happens here because we're not saving this anywhere. When the input returns a value back, we need to save it into a variable. So this is our first concept of variables. Let's go ahead and save this into the variable firm name. And so this is going to get this string from please enter your firm name, where we pass this string to the input function. And it's going to return back into firm name the result. And now we can print what we get from firm name, like so. So let's go ahead and run that. Please enter your firm name. We can say Pirate Trader Game. And you'll see that we get back the exact value that we inputted. So this is how we can collect information from the user, save it into a variable. And in Python, we don't have to define the variables. It's automatically going to take on the type. And in this case, it's characters in what is called a string in most programming languages. We're going to call that data type a string. So now that we've seen how to just print the firm name out, let's see how we can add a label to that. So we could come in here and say firm name and put a colon here and maybe a space so it looks a little better. And we can use the plus sign here to add this string 
to the string that we created here. So this is sometimes called concatenation, and we're adding this string to this string. And we can now run this and see that when we enter our firm name, that we now have it formatted just a little bit better, just like that. So now that we know how to get input, the very next question that they ask in this type hand game is how to uh, how you want to start. Do you want to start with cash in a debt, or do you want to start with cannons? So let's ask for that. We're going to say starting options. So this is going to let us save our starting options from the input that we get. We're going to say input. How do you wish to start? And we'll say one cash and debt are two cannons no debt and of course that means also no cash you can format any way you want so that it it looks better to input but this is how I've done it and this is gonna prompt us now and we're gonna get back as we're prompting from the user a one or a two we're expecting that and for our first versions we're not gonna worry too much about validating this input we're gonna just learn that as we go along so let's go ahead and see how we can check for that. So we're going to learn our first conditional statements. We're already on the ifs. So we're going to say if the starting options equals, and we do a double equal sign here to check if these values match. And I'm going to just say one, because as we can see here, we're asking the user to enter a one here. And so this, so this is the format for an if statement. We have if, and then whatever condition we want to check. In this case, we're checking to see if this variable now is set to a one. And notice we're putting quotes around it here because it is a string. We're not turning it into a number. We're just treating it as if it's a string. And in Python, we have a colon here to basically end the if statement. And that's just the convention. When I hit enter, notice that it automatically indents to here. Python indention is very important. You have to have four spaces. So we're going to automatically indent there for us but if it doesn't in your IDE you're going to have to you're going to have to space over four or hopefully at least you have a development environment where when you hit tab it's going to handle that formatting for you now what do we want to do when it's one so this is if this is true well we want cash and a debt so let's set up some variables to hold our cash and our debt we can say cash equals 100 and then of course our debt could equal 100 as well. Or we could instead say debt equals our cash. And so that way, if we decide to start with 250, we don't have to change this variable. We're just setting the debt equal to cash. This is known as an integer. And like I said, in Python, it's automatically going to assign the type to the variable. So it knows that this is a integer variable once you assign the integer to it. Now, we also have canons. And we know that cannons are going to equal zero um, if you do the cash and the debt. Now, if statements also then, of course, have an else to them. So if this happens, we you know one happens, we want to do these things. Otherwise, we'll go ahead and do the cannons. So it's going to look like this: zero debt equals zero, cannons equals five. We'll say. I think that's what they had in the original. And just like that, we have our first if statement. Let's go ahead and now print out our cache. And we'll just do that because that's going to be easy for us to tell if this worked as it should. And we'll, you know, because it'll be 250 if we do one, and it'll be zero for cache if we do anything but a one. So it's very simplistic at this point. We're not doing validation, but at least now we can get the input and actually have a different action based upon the user input. So let's go ahead and run. And our firm name will be my firm. And notice it says now, how do you wish to start? Cash and debt. Can is no debt. Let's go ahead and do the cash and debt. And you'll notice that we have 250. Now, I'll leave it to you to run it again and test it to see what the cash comes out here. So now that we're getting this far along we we ask these two questions and then what will happen typically is then the game's going to refresh and show the game interface so let's go ahead before we end this lecture and do that final thing where we'll clear the interface no, to do that we have to import a library into our 
application here into our program. And we do that by coming up here at the top and we're going to type import OS. And this will give us access to a, a bunch of libraries and we really only need uh, one command here to clear the screen just so it makes it easy for us to, to, to see the screen every time we take an option uh, and we do something in the game, we want to clear the screen so we can redraw it with the new, the new information. So to do that, we're just going to say OS dot. And in Python and in a lot of programming languages, this dot parameter gives us access to all the methods and properties that are inside of this particular library that we imported here. So we import it here. And now there's a whole bunch of stuff. If I hit period, you'll see there's all these things that are in here. So you kind of have to know what you want. Uh, there's a lot of documentation out there, so don't be afraid. In this case, I'm going to tell you what we need. We just need system and we say CLS. And what this is going to do is it's going to clear our terminal. So after we get these starting options, we're going to start all over. So we can come down here again and say print and let's just put in a big long divider like that and we'll say print again and we'll say uh, Python Pirate Trader 1.0. Actually, let's make it 0.1 alpha. <laughs> Very much alpha. And you can get experimental here and do whatever you like and get comfortable making print statements. Feel free to ask for extra input too if you would like. So now we, we can have in here say cache equals and what we're going to do is we're going to see our first error here on purpose. So um, before we do, I'm going to comment this out so this line doesn't run. So a comment here means uh, with this pound sign, you can comment anything and the interpreter will just ignore this. You can use it for information and comments and things to make uh, anything in your code that isn't clear, make it more clear by providing comments using this. But in this case, I'm just using it so that we can run this and see what we get. We're going to ask for our firm name. I'm going to say my firm. I'm not being creative there. And then um, let's go ahead and say Canon's no debt. And notice now the screen has cleared and it got rid of everything else. And we have Py Python Pirate Trader 0.1a and we're ready to go. So with that, we're going to end this lecture. We got our project set up. We learned about the print statement. We learned how we could get help from any statement. So, you know, for example, we could come down here now and type help input and get help on the input statement like so. So this is just a handy thing that, to know that if there's any command you need to find more about, you can. And then we also learned how to do an if statement so we can do conditions. Already that's a lot of power. And we learned how to clear the screen. We're ready now to start building on this. So we're going to try to move quick. This should be probably very simple for most of you getting started out. So we're, we're um, you know, even if you're new, you probably maybe knew some of this. So in the next lecture, we're going to keep moving quick, more quickly and get our basic game interface set up and start learning really how to dive into some Python.